NFL offseason. We're in MLB offseason mode now. And in today's video, I'm going to look at the latest rumors and news around Major League Baseball pre-free agency. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video. But before I get into this video, 85% of you that watch these videos are not even subscribed to the channel. So go ahead and get your life together and hit that subscribe button, turn notifications, and leave a like on this video. Subscribe, turn notifications, and leave a like, and let's go ahead and get into this video. We've got five rumors and news to talk about in today's video, so let's go ahead and get into it. First one is Mike Trout really wants the Los Angeles Angels to sign Max Scherzer. Scherzer is one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball, and arguably the best in Major League Baseball this past year. Scherzer, on this past year, combined with two teams, had a... In his age 36 season, may I add, had um, for Scherzer, he was on a seven-year $210 million deal. He had 30 games started this year with a 2.46 ERA, and he pitched absolutely great, especially since coming over to Los Angeles. This year, he had a 15-4 record with a 3.76 ERA combined with the two teams this year. What a great year from Scherzer. For a guy that's 36 years old, he's going to get paid a lot of money. People are even speculating that he could get as much as $40 million this offseason, which is not realistic for the Angels. The Angels are in a... They're, they're in a money situation. A not very good one, obviously, because they've got the bad contract of Anthony Rendon, which is over $30 million that they're paying him for the next, for the next I think it's three years that they've still got on the books, if not more of him. Um, that they're paying him. Mike Trout's not getting any younger. He's getting more and more injury prone by the years. He's been injured mostly the last two years, and especially in 2021, he was basically injured the whole year. So they've got the one thing is here is Mike Trout really wants them to sign Max Scherzer, but the key to the Angels next season is Mike Trout being healthy. That's the main key next year is Mike Trout being healthy. If Mike Trout's not healthy, they're not going to go to the World Series. I know that. It's a question that they even go to the playoffs next year. And, um, yeah, Trout needs to focus on his own health, not who the Angels are signing this offseason, just in my opinion. Now, the Angels have some clear needs this offseason, definitely in starting and relief pitching. You've obviously got um, a couple starters that are probably going to still be there next year. Shohei, obviously, is going to be a starter there next year. Sandoval, you could talk yourself into. Detmers is probably going to be there next year as well. He was their 10th round or 10th overall pick back in 2020. Struggled in five games started, but still is a guy who realistically is going to probably be on their team next year. So, realistically, they're looking for one or two starters at least. Um... In the offseason. Now they're looking for a bunch of bullpen help, or they should be at least looking for a bunch of bullpen help because the bullpen was awful. Um, Ty Butchery will be back. He's a solid arm in that bullpen. And um, yeah, I mean, Iglesias is going to be heading to free agency. They're going to need to bring him back this offseason. He was a big piece of what helped them shut down games. So they need relief pitching and starting pitching this offseason. I don't know if I would invest all the little money that they have in one player, I don't think signing Max Scherzer would be honestly the smartest thing. Second rumor is the Mariners actually tried to trade for Chris Bryant at the 2021 Major League Baseball trade deadline. Now, we know the Mariners surprised a lot of people this year being how good they were in 2021. They had a very solid year finishing in second place in the American League West and overall had a very solid year for Mariners standards and almost made the playoffs, almost into that drought. And that's what they're going to be looking to do this offseason. Now, Seattle, I think, is in uh, is in um, big contention to possibly sign a big free agent. I really do think that they could possibly sign a very big free agent. And for Seattle right now, this is a team that really had a very good year this year. The bullpen was phenomenal this year. Um, and the hitting performed pretty solidly, especially Ty France and Mitch Hanniger and J.P. Crawford really had a great year. Um, and Kalanick is only going to get better next year. Flexen had a big breakout year this year. Flexen was so good. You see Kikuchi, we'll see if they bring him back this offseason. I doubt they bring him back this offseason. But they're in line to bring in a big, big bat this offseason. And it would be very good if they could. This Mariners team is fun and exciting for the first time in a long time. And this Mariners team is only getting better. Amirson Hancock could be up as 
the latest next year. Same thing with J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez, one of the more one of the best prospects in baseball. So this Mariners team is only going up as far as excitingness goes. Will they sign possibly Chris Bryant? How will that lead to the offseason as possibly as possibly what they could do with Chris Bryant? Are they gonna try to target him in the offseason, which they definitely could. And I think it would be a pretty solid idea to possibly target him in the offseason. He's guys flexible, can play the third base or outfield. But I think a guy like Marcus Simeon would almost be a better fit for this Mariners team. Next up is the Cubs are shopping Wilson Contreras this offseason, just as they should. The Cubs for the last half of the year played with a double-A baseball team, basically. They played with their double-A roster. And Wilson Contreras is a guy that is going to be one of the top trade candidates this offseason, in my opinion. I think he's definitely going to be somebody that every team that's in need of a catcher is going to be going after this offseason. A team like the Marlins showed interest last offseason in a guy like Wilson Contreras. Wilson Contreras, Ian Happ, and Patrick Wisdom are really the only, and Kyle Hendricks are really the only good players left on this team. I mean, there is not very many good players left on this team. Madrigal's obviously going to be back next year. But they don't have a lot of good players left on this team. And they're in, I mean, they're paying Jason Hayward a bunch of money, which is just such a bad contract. I mean, there there is no way that you can say not. He, just such a bad contract there. Hayward is literally just, killing them cap wise i think they'll try to bring in a big free agent this offseason i really like the move of wade miley though yesterday claiming him off waivers i thought was a great move for the cubs the guy that had a three era last year that just got just claimed off waivers i mean that's such a great move it really is for a cubs team that i mean it doesn't really fit the timeline with wade miley because this is a guy who's um 35 years old but it just makes me seem like Wade Miley's going to get traded. Like, Wade Miley's getting picked up. They're going to hope that he's really good through half a season, and they're trading him. That's exactly what this move seems like to me. And Wilson Contreras, I think, is going to be another one that goes at the, whether it's this offseason or the 2022 deadline. Like, he's gone. Some teams like the Marlins, I think, will show interest in him. I had a video from last year. These MLB teams must trade for Wilson Contreras, so... You can go and watch that video if you want to go if if you want to see me go in depth with all the teams. The Braves even could target him. There's a lot of different teams. The fourth rumor that I've got is the White Sox have picked up that option on Craig Kimbrell for $16 million, and he's most likely to be traded this offseason, just as we expected with Craig Kimbrell. Kimbrell came into the White Sox and absolutely just did terrible. He was so bad. I mean. He was, he was so bad, and I think it's fit. I think this was a really bad fit for Craig Kimbrough. I think that you could have put him in any other place that he would, and he would have he would have said, if you would have said the options that he wanted to go, it would have been anywhere but Chicago because White Sox already have one great closer in Liam Hendricks. Why would they want another one? It did make six from the White Sox side of things, and for sure Craig Kimbrough had to be confused by the move too because for sure I was. It was a dumb move, and now I don't think you're going to get nearly as much value out of Craig Kimbrell, and you're going to get pennies on the dollar for what's a very good player in Craig Kimbrell this this offseason when they most likely trade him. And what the White Sox could look back for in a trade, I don't really think they need bullpen help. Um, they've got a really good bullpen. I don't think they need to over-exaggerate to that. Um, I think it was just Craig Kimbrell that was bad in their bullpen. Um, they definitely... Um, a look at bringing Carlos Rendon back and possibly another guy in, like maybe a Nick Castellanos or somebody like that. They could look at bringing in even a Nelson Cruz if they wanted to go that route. But if in on the other side of Chicago this year, um, he had a five ERA, uh, or no, combined he had a two point two six ERA this year, but he had like over a five ERA with the White Sox this year, which is really really bad. The White Sox lineup we know is great. They're starting pitching really good as well with or without Rendon and their relief pitching is good too they don't I, I don't see why um they even brought in Craig Kimbrell in the first place and the final one is Nick Castellanos has opted out of his contract of the rest of his 32 million dollars remaining with the Cincinnati Reds and he will be hitting free agency this offseason this is a and the Reds are going to extend or try to get him back on the QO they're sure not 
Castellanos is going to get a lot of money from a team this offseason. I'm not sure who that team's going to be. But but a lot of money is going to be given to Nick Castellanos this offseason. And, um, yeah, so the Reds already made a questionable move. Getting off the $10 million of Wade Miley didn't make a ton of sense to me at all. And this Reds team is honestly not a team that really I don't think should re-sign Nick Castellanos. I think this team is probably going to head more towards setting the rebuild button because they have some very good young players on this team. India had a great year this year. He's the front rider for NL Rookie of the Year. He's only 24 years old. Winker's 28. Votto obviously is getting up there in age, but he had a great year this year. He didn't show any signs of slowing down. Granio Suarez has been a disappointment. I think he might get traded this offseason. Same thing with Naquin or somebody like that. Um, just some of those players that they probably don't see. They would love to get off the contract of Moustakas, I, I assume, or if I was their GM, I would love to. I think they should still give chances to guys like Aquino and Nick Senzel. Shogo Akiyama's never really showed up in the majors. And their starting pitching is obviously really good, like it tends to be always with the Reds. But I think they will look at trading a guy like Sonny Gray or Luis Castillo this offseason. And their bullpen is god-awful. Pretty simple. But this Reds team, I you know, I just don't see Castellanos going back to the Reds. I just don't. I can't see Castellanos going back to the Reds. Um, just a team that I just don't see him winning a World Series with at all. And, you know, the Reds, I, I, I like the Reds, but, like, I just don't see it. I just don't see him going back. Um, but the – but Castellanos, the thing with him is I really think he needs to know, like, for his market, it really needs to show whether the uh, universal DH is going to be back. That's going to be a big thing. Because if the universal DH is back, that's 15 more teams that realistically are interested in even more in Castellanos if they weren't already. I mean, some NL teams probably were a little interested, but they're even more interested if there's a DH in the National League. Um, I mean, very interested. Some teams would be. Um, I mean, some teams in the National I, – I think the White Sox are a team that could look at a guy like Castellanos. I mean, a team like the Marlins – could look at a guy like Castellanos, even though he would hate playing in that ballpark. Um, a team like even San Diego, I think, could look at a guy like Castellanos. San Francisco as well. There's a ton of different teams that could look at a guy like Castellanos this offseason. But yeah, that's going to be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn notifications. If you want to see more videos like this, I'll pump them out for you. Leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications. That's how you show me you like this video. 85% of you that watch these videos though are not subscribed, so I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button, turn notifications, and leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching, and peace.